Hi, I'm Jake from Xano, and in today's session, we're going to be building an automation in Xano using ClickUp as our source. And we're going to use webhooks and pull the information from ClickUp into Xano. And we're going to look at all of the orders in our Xano database and then push that information back into ClickUp. So let's get started. That's something sweet. Today, we're going to take a look at how we can build automations in Xano. And so uh, what we're going to try to do is we've got a, a little setting in ClickUp. Um, we want, we've built a little fake CRM here. And what we want to do is take the email of these tasks um, and be able to look inside of our orders database that lives in Xano and then push that information back over into our revenue field here. And we want to automate it so that anytime we change the status of one of these, uh, it can be a trigger to go and get the most recent information. And so the way that we're going to do this is by looking at a couple of tables that we've got in, in Xano. Uh, we'll match it up on the user record and then get the information, um, the corresponding orders um, from the orders table. So we'll, before we start with that, I'm just going to give a little bit of background about you know what Xano is, um, since it might be new to uh, some of the people seeing this. And then we'll get into building our own API endpoint. Um, I'm going to show you some tricks to make that easier. We'll show how to look up these orders uh, using the database. And then lastly, we'll get a webhook set up so that it actually triggers automatically. And again, I'll be doing all of these with the free version of Xano and the free version of ClickUp. Um, so here we go. So Xano, just at a very high level, we are focused on the back end of things. So, you know, powering a website, uh, powering the database, creating your own APIs that interface with the front end. So your, your web flow or we web, things like that. And then, um, you know, if you're a WISD user, WIS is kind of tying those things together. Um, but you can also use JavaScript um, and other things to interface with Xano as well. And so, you know, we're a server, a database, and a no code API builder. And so, what we'll be mostly focused on today is, you know, the database and building things with the no code API builder. And so, uh, the nice thing about Xano is that as you scale, uh, Xano scales with you. And so, um, you know, a lot of people think of, well, I'll start in no code. And then when we get, you know, when we hit it big, then we'll, you know, switch to code. But the nice thing is that you can scale to as big as you get. Um, and then it, if you scale so much that you're like, we actually want to do our own hosting and, and all of that, you can actually just uh, use the self-serve program with Xano as well. So um, what we'll cover today is just kind of, you know, you do get a lot for the free version. So you get 100,000 records for free. Um, if you do end up going to the, the paid versions, uh, it's flat pricing. So you're not paying per operation, which you know a lot of the other um, automation tools do. And so, um, and it's pretty cool to be able to build your own APIs um, that then you can reach out to from your website or from your app or from today in ClickUp. Um, I also just wanted to call out uh, we've got a brand new community, so um, you can actually, and I'll show you this, you can get right directly from the, uh, you know, from Xano into the community. Don't even need a separate login. Um, so this is actually why <laughs> uh, why we pushed this uh, session back from November is because I was busy launching this. So definitely recommend checking that out. So um, what we'll do is hop over into ClickUp. And I'm just going to move my notes up here. Okay, so we've got uh, in ClickUp, and if you're new to ClickUp, um, it's like most different, uh, you know, task management software. But uh, we can we can use it in a lot of different ways. So it doesn't have to be just tracking your tasks. In this case, we're, we've got kind of our own little custom CRM, and so we want to be able to. Uh, when I change the status here, or we've got a, a variety of options for what the trigger can be, but we want to use that as a way to, uh, you know, connect with Xano and go into our database and pull related information. So, um, 
So for example, let me just show you real quick. We've got our orders database. And so what we're kind of assuming today, because you know, I'm not going to get into the details of the database setup right here, but basically it's a, you know, it's a spreadsheet essentially. And so we'll just um, assume that this is coming in from our website. Uh, these are orders that have come in and they're all tied to a, a user here. And so here we can see um, the user ID here is actually number three, um, but it also gives a little preview of, of who that user is. And so we're, we're connected here to our, our users here. And if I show my little table relationships, this is how they're connected. So each user has an ID and then we're referencing that in the orders table. So that's what we're going to use to, to get this information. So to get, you know, I'm going to back up again and now we're going to try to make our first API call. And so I will say that if you have a paid plan of ClickUp, you can come up here to your automations. You can add automations for all these different uh, triggers here. And then you can say, call a webhook. Um, but now that costs money. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do is uh, a little bit of a workaround. We're going to create the webhook with the API. And we still have a lot of um, triggers that we can use with that API. And so the very first thing we'll do is come up here to our, our profile, go to settings. And then over on the left-hand side, we have this apps down here. And so this is where we're going to get our token. Now, this is obviously something that you want to keep private. Uh, this is just a dummy account. So um, normally I would not live stream this, but um, so we're going to take our, our token here and we're going to use this. Um, I'm going to show you how to use Postman uh, to quickly uh, make test API calls. And then we're going to be able to copy and paste those directly into Xano. And it's going to save a lot of time. So what we can do is they've got a link right here, which is nice um, for their API documentation. And a lot of big uh, APIs or popular APIs like Stripe, they have a Postman collection already built. So I don't need to go through here and, and look at all of the different um, API routes. Like I can definitely do that. Um, and it's, you know, useful information here, but I think for a lot of people that can be a little bit daunting. Um, and so what we can do is actually take a little shortcut and I like shortcuts. So we go to getting started and then the postman collection, you can just search it in here as well. And if we click on this, it's going to take us into postman. You can just make a free postman account with your Gmail or whatever. Um, so it takes us here and what we want to do so that we can actually start using it is, uh, you see this fork button here. So if you ever used GitHub or things like that, um, we can create a copy of it, um, but we'll still uh, be able to get any, you know, maybe if they release a new endpoint, um, that will still come through. And so it's just a really easy way to um, start working with this. And so now um, I've got all these different uh, API routes right here. And so now I can come in here and I can start trying these out. So I'm going to get rid of this one because I already have one. Um, actually, I'm going to switch over to my app. So in Postman, we will go to the top up here of the collection, and we have different options here like uh, authorization and variables. And so um, these should already be set to use variables um, with this collection. And so we can just pop over here to the variables. And this is where we would pop in the value for our API key. And that's what we got on that previous screen. So we'll put that in there. The key will be the authorization. And then let me show you real quick how you get your team ID. So um, even from this, this screen that we're on here, um, we can grab that API token. But then if we just grab this set of numbers um, right after the .com, we'll grab that and put that in there for our team ID. And so we won't need that for our first API call, but we'll need it when we go to um, uh, do an update. So here we've got our get task and it's already doing some things for us, setting the content type, um, if it's got any parameters, headers, um, and then here we're just doing a get. And so 
Uh, we don't need to have a, a body here. So all we have to do is just fill in this task ID. And so if I come over here back to my workspace, let's just grab one of these task IDs. So I'm going to just copy this ID. It's also up here in the URL. And I'm just going to paste that in. And since I've already, so the, the authorization step is inheriting from this whole collection. So the nice thing about that is that I can go through, I can make any of these API calls while I'm testing, and it's going to use that same um, authorization. So it just really saves me a lot of time when I'm trying to practice and, and try these things out. So um, now I can see my results here. I can see all my custom fields right here. And so another little trick, um, I'm going to copy this um, and then open a new tab. And maybe you've already heard of, of this website, but jsoncrack.com, you can paste in your JSON, and I'm going to try to zoom in. Um, and so what we can do here now is we can visually kind of see the structure of our JSON. Now, these are probably, this JSON is going to be a little bit more complex than you might get in, you know, some of your API calls, but um, we're going to, I'm going to show you how we can make sense of all of this. So here at the root level of this, this JSON that gets returned is the task ID and then um, some timestamps and things like that. But then the part that we're going to be most concerned with today is inside of the custom fields array. So we've got eight, eight items inside of this array and they're all different um, custom fields. And so here we can see we've got a drop down for the account health. So there's our account health and then the stage. And so we're all, we're also seeing these are drop downs. Um, drop downs are a little tricky in ClickUp, but I'm going to show you a little trick that um, makes it a lot easier to work with those. Um, but the rest of the fields are pretty easy to work with. And so here with the email, this is one of the things that we're going to need first so that we can, based on what we get from that task, we need to get the email address so that we can search in our database. So this is basically just um, giving us the information that we need. And so now we'll be ready to, um, to bring that into Xano. So the very next thing that we'll do is let's just go ahead and hop into Xano. Um, we'll do the update task in a, in a bit, um, but I just want to, you know, while we've just talked about this structure, I think it'll be good to, to you know, start building some stuff. So um, the cool thing here, now that we've been, you know, we, we took a couple minutes to get set up in, in Postman, but now one of the, you know, the fruits of that labor. <laughs> so we can come over here and you just click this little code button and you can export it in a variety of ways. We just want a curl statement. And so don't worry about making sense of, you know, what that means. All you got to do is just hit copy and then we'll pop over into Xano and we'll go to the API tab. Now I've already set this up. There's a little wizard to, to walk you through um, when you first get started. So we're going to start with a, a brand new API endpoint. So again, we're going to APIs over here and then we'll create a new API endpoint. I like to start from scratch. Um, if you're building, if you've already built out your tables and things, um, some people like to use the, um, the CRUD operations where it'll just create a variety of different, uh, things for you. But personally, I find that, you know, I don't always need to have an endpoint to, you know, go through and delete something. And frankly, I don't want that most of the time. So, um, yeah, so there's a lot of options on how we can do this. So let's, um, let's call this something like update revenue. And so you can use uh, slashes, just like if you look through other API documentation, you'll notice they have a full path. Um, and so you can you can also include uh, variables inside of here. So it could be like task ID and then, you know, the other part of it like this. And so then we can dynamically pass that through as a uh, a URL parameter. Um, we're not going to do that right now because we're going to, this is going to be in the body 
of the API request that comes through through the webhook. So we're going to set this to post, um, and this will allow for that that body. Cool. So now we're starting off with a blank slate, which you know at times that can sound scary, but all we're going to do is come over here to this plus in the function stack, and then we want to do our first uh, external API request. And then with a lot of the automation tools out there, just to be able to do this step, you got to pay. <laughs> and so you know this is a nice thing that we get that we get for free. Now here's the cool thing. So now inside of here, I can hit import curl. I'm just going to paste that in. Hit import. And now what it's done is it's set up all my um, my authorization headers, the URL, all of that. And then I can come over here to output. I'm just going to call this API task. And so this way, as I start to add a bunch of things here, I just get a better idea of what I'm receiving here. Now, one of the things that it did is it hard-coded that task ID. So we're going to have to make that dynamic. But for now, let's just do our first run and debug. We'll hit run, and we should get a 200 response. So that's good. So it, there's it's broken into a couple uh, chunks here. So we have the request, which is just the initial request um, that was sent through. And then the response is the part that we are most interested in. Um, and especially in the result. So here we're getting the ID of that task, the status of that task. And then um, when we come down here to the custom fields, this is an array that we'll look inside of um, to get all of the, the key information that we want. So one of the things that we can do when we get this is we can actually copy these results and we can come over here and start creating some variables. And I'll show you some little tricks to make it easier to kind of navigate through those um, different variables there. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a uh, task ID. It'll just be one level deep. So actually, let's do, let's call this task. So here's my API results of API task. If I hover over the this and then hit subpath. I've already copied this. I'm just going to paste this here. So now I get those two chunks that I talked about. And we're going to look at the response inside the result. And um, so this is the main part we care about. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the result. Um, and this will be our task. So we could we could reference those elements inside of it really easily. So for example, if we want to save a variable, for task ID, what we can do is now we can reference our task object, which is just the results part over here. And then I can just use dot notation to say, now I want one of these items inside of this. And so I want task.id, and I'll save that. So now I've, I've created a couple of variables um, based on my results of that API call. Um, and then if I want to see that, I want to see what I'm getting back for, like, let's just try task ID. So um, I can click this little plus down here. You can also click that original plus that I did, um, but this will just do it directly under wherever you're working. And we want to do stop and debug. So this is one that I use a ton. And you can put regular text in here. Um, but you can also uh, add your variables or you can concatenate them. It, this is just a really good way to uh, see what, what is actually getting output. So now it, this is going to stop my automation. When I hit run, it's going to stop and it's going to display the results of this step. And so this is exactly what we expected. We wanted to get the task ID. So now if we wanted to um, save let's say the email. So let's create another variable. We'll call this email. Okay. So now where it gets a little tricky is again, inside of our uh, custom fields, we have 
an array. And um, we want to talk about the, the one for email. And so, you know, we could reference it by the name. Um, the problem with that is that if you change the name in ClickUp, you know, then that kind of breaks your automation. So a much safer way is to use that ID for this custom field. So basically anytime we're, you know, talking about this email field, we're going to reference it by this ID. So uh, one thing that we can do, I'm just going to save this as an empty variable for now. Um, we're going to create a couple variables for these these main custom field IDs that we want to keep track of. So this first one, let's just call it a custom field ID or email. And so I already took the time to, you know, figure out what that was. And by doing this, now it's going to be a whole lot easier to, to reference that. And then what I'll do is create one more because this is going to be for our revenue custom field. So we do custom field ID revenue. You can call these whatever you want. You can have it be as verbose as you'd like. So let's search through here and there's our revenue field. So I can click on that. And you can get all of this also from the debugger. You don't have to use, you know, JSON crack, but it's just, uh, you know, one of the things that I was thinking of with, with Postman as well, is that like, this is kind of your workbook. This is like a set of notes, you know, I can duplicate these tasks. I can change the name. Um, you can add a variety of things to, to like, kind of have this be like your little notebook of, of tests. Um, and then, you know, when you build your next automation, you've already got the groundwork laid um, to start doing some more cool stuff. So we've got our cut our couple of IDs here. And now we want to actually go through and get the value of that email. And so um, one of the things that we can do is, so since we're dealing with an array, um, what we can do here is we can use, I'm going to hit this plus again. So if we come over here to data manipulation, there's a lot of tools here for arrays. And so here we want to find the first element of this array that matches the criteria that I set. So we're going to talk to our task and we want the custom fields array that's inside of there. And so if I zoom out a little bit, so this is the first level and then one level deep is that custom fields array. And so just using dot notation, um, I'm accessing that variable of task and then the custom fields array that's inside of that. And so here I can come over to the little pencil and this is where I can specify, um, you know, cause this is basically going to loop through, um, it's going to go through each of the items. So it's going to go through eight times for each item in that array. And it's going to look at the, the contents here. And so I, I'm going to say, when it finds one that matches this ID, go ahead and, you know, give me that information back. So this is our, um, it's our iterator. So like it's going to give us the information based on, um, the current iteration. And so inside of that, again, we're going to look for the dot ID. And we're going to set this equal to um, that handy little variable that we set that has that ID of email. And then we return it as whatever we want. So in this case, let's just call this email. And yes, I did start creating a variable up here that was called email. Whatever comes, you know, whatever's at the, the, the most recent one is going to be the one that it's actually set to. So essentially this is going to be ignored. Um, but I'm going to show you another way that we like just recently came out with, um, expressions and I'm pretty excited about expressions. Um, and so I, I want to show you both ways. Um, and so we can start, uh, trying out some new stuff in here. So let's change our stop and debug to show us email. If I run this, okay. So we actually got 
the full object. And that could be helpful. That's helpful for drop downs and things like that. But in the case of, you know, text fields and email fields and booleans and things like that, um, we just really care about the value. And so one of the things that we can do inside of here is we can add these filters. And so there's a ton of options. You can do a lot of transformation, you know, and you can stack these filters. So um, in our case, we just want to do a simple thing, which is a get. And so here we can say, um, we can look for a specific path. And so again, looking inside of one of these objects, you know, each one of these is the, um, is basically a path inside of this object. So for us, we want to look at the value. And if there isn't anything there, we'll just return null. And this is the safest way to, um, to access items when you don't always know that it's going to be there because sometimes if it's not there, um, you can get an error. And so this is just the safest way to do this. So if you take nothing out of today and you're like getting started with Xano, uh, I would definitely encourage you to play around with get, and then I'll show you set in just a little bit. Um, there, I think, you know, for myself, I struggled with that concept a little bit at first. Um, but it's very, very useful, especially as we start getting into using expressions. So if I run this again, now I'm only returning that value of that email object. And that's what we want. That's what we're going to use um, to be able to look up the orders. So before I do that, I do want to show you the other way that we can do it. And one of the, the things behind our desire to you know, make it easier to access things like this is so that you can copy and paste, um, you can share it in the community, you know, what's working for you. And like, it just makes it a whole lot easier to, um, you know, reapply it. Personally, I find it also helpful, like when I go to create my next automation, um, you know, I've got a document of just all these different little tricks and little snippets that I like to use. So um, what we'll do here is using expressions is really cool. So we can just hit use expression and what we're going to do. And actually, before I do this, I'm just going to show you how we can, um, we go to task and then we can use our regular dot notation. And so this is, this would normally, you know, just give us that full array. I'll go ahead and run this just so we can kind of see, um, so it's giving us all of the custom fields. We can see there's eight, just like we saw in JSON crack. And so it's giving us all of these different, um, this array of custom fields. So obviously we don't want all of them. Um, here's where we can do some cool stuff. So we'll do use expression. Um, we'll notice that it adds this little dollar sign to it. Um, but now we're getting to work with this um, in a cool way. So with these, um, like the real power, I think, with these expressions is that we can do loops without having to set up loops inside of our um, function stack. So here I can say inside of this array, and if you have done even the most basic programming, you would know like, you know, you've got these little brackets, which means we're talking to an array. So I could say, you know, uh, you know, a, sp a specific number inside of there. Well, here's what we're going to do is these double dollar signs are going to allow us to, to loop through and get the results of each thing inside of it. And so if we wanted to, um, I believe each of these should have a value, um, right inside of it. So like, if I, so we've got each one has a value now drop downs are a little bit different, um, but we should, um, still get value and I'm, we're not done with this yet, but I just want to show you. So now we just get this array of all of the values of those different things. Obviously that's not helpful, but the cool thing is that we can actually specify inside of these brackets that we want the, um, the ID to match. So to be equal to, and then we did our cool little, um, uh, custom field ID for email. And so now. And actually, I think I need my little dollar sign there. And so now I can get that. Um, 
and then return the value. So let's try that. Sweet. So we're almost there. Um, the one little thing that will probably, you know, um, trip up some, some beginners is that when you see these brackets like this, um, you know, this is actually inside of an array, even though there's only one item in there, um, it's still being treated as an array. And so I'm going to get errors when I try to, to, you know, search my database with this, cause I really just want the item inside of it. And so what I can do here, and I don't know if you caught it, but like in this little, this original one we did, it was find first element in. So, uh, what I'm going to do is this little pipe. So, um, it's just the upward slash like that. And then, um, yeah, it's cause I'm zoomed in so far, I think. So what I'm going to do is just type in first. And so any of the filters that you get in this filter menu, we can actually use with this little pipe like this. So it's pretty cool. Um, and so now we do our run and debug. Cool. Now it's giving us exactly what we want. And obviously that might have felt like, oh, that was a lot of work. Um, but the nice thing is that now I can just copy and paste it. And all you got to do is, is swap out that ID. And now we can get, um, you know, the thing for the revenue field, for example. So um, that was my long-winded <laughs> way of, of setting this up. And so, and I don't know if I like called this out, but just like in code, you can comment things out. Um, so by enabling it or disabling it, we're essentially just commenting it out. Um, speaking of commenting, um, I think it's kind of helpful to, uh, if I hold down shift and then, um, make a little group so I can select these items, hit group. Now I can come over here and say, edit description. And we can just call this like get task info. And so, you know, the nice thing about this is that you can collapse it if you're focused on another aspect of it. And it just kind of helps keep things relatively tidy. Um, I will say not all of my function stacks are tidy, but uh, <laughs> it's for your future self or a teammate who might be looking at it. Um, I think it is definitely helpful to, to do that. You can also do that per item um, and you can say like exactly what you're doing. So, it, you know, commenting is just a good practice in general. So, okay. So now that we've got that email, what we want to do is actually look inside of our database and get that matching email so that we can do our API call. Actually, so we want to get the stuff from the database and then um, based on what we return from that, we'll push the total value back to ClickUp. So again, I can just hit this plus up here and we're going to go to database requests. So here we've got a whole lot of options. Um, the one we're going to use is query all records, but you can do things like add a new record or add or edit if it doesn't exist. Um, and then uh, edit a record and things like that. So we'll just do query all records. We're going to look at the user table. Again, um, let me just show you. So I'm over here in my databases. We can say show table relationships. And just want to show this again. So the user table, we've got our ID for each one. Any table has IDs for each item, um, but then we're matching it on the user ID field here. So let's go back, use our little shortcut here, where all records, we're going to look up the user. And so I did that a little bit quick. Um, we want to use this custom query and we'll hit add conditional. And so here we want it to be matched on their email address. So we're looking the things with this heading of database user. Um, these are the, the fields that live inside of that. Uh, and we can see this here in the schema. So we've got name, email, the fake Stripe ID, things like that. So we're going to match on their email. And we just want this to, if I scroll down just a little bit, we see our variables and there's our little email that we created. So if the user field in that, uh, that user, that email column in the database 
if that email matches. Let me just... Uh, so there's that email for that person. It's going to return this record based on that. And so if I hit save, um, I'm going to drag this stop and debug right below that. And we'll use user one. Actually, let me rename this. So I'm clicking on user down here. Output, we can customize the name right here. So we'll call that user. And now I will change this. I can just type in user return. Okay. So again, we're getting an array, but we only have one user. Um, you know, we've got good database database hygiene, and we should only be re returning one thing. So rather than having to, you know, get the first item in there, what I can do is in my query under output, I can change this return type to single. And so now instead of getting an array, we get a single object and that's what we want. So now that we have that user, um, obviously that's not giving us the orders that we want. And so what we can do, rather than having to make a separate call, because we could also go here and do a query all records on the orders database. But if you have, you know, let's say your database is not 100 users, but it's, you know, 100,000. Um, we want to be a little bit more uh, frugal <laughs> with our, you know, database usage if possible, if possible. And so one of the things we can do is use an add-on. And so this is another one of those things. If you take nothing else from today, you know, <laughs> check out get and set, but also check out add-ons. So what we can do is hit add-on and we'll create a new one. And we're going to reference the order table. Um, in this case, we do want a list of items because one user can have many um, orders. So we'll do a list of items. And we're going to match it on the user ID. So just to kind of make sense again, um, so here's our, our user ID. So for this, this test user, that ID is three. And then if I look over here in orders, um, let's just do a quick little search and this will give us an idea of what we should, um, what we should get back. So I'll do a filter and we'll do it based on user ID. User ID equals three. Okay. We should get back three orders for where this user ID equals three. And so by matching that, um, we will get user orders. You can call that whatever you want. Um, again, I'm just going to simplify this to just be orders. If you wanted to, you can also just leave this blank and it'll just put the results, you know, right at this root level. But I think it'll be cleaner to have it inside of an orders array. So we'll hit that, hit save, hit run. This is really cool. So now we're getting the results of all of that person's orders, all in one API, or all in one database call. Um, and so that is pretty handy. And this is where we're going to go through. And we want to, um, using some magic again, we can get this order total of each one of these orders and then sum it and return it. And so this is where I'm going to show you how we can use the, the set. What I want to do is actually update this variable. We'll do plus, and then I just start typing update. You can also make it a favorite if you use it a lot. I'm going to update my user variable. That's, that's this whole object that gets returned. Um, and I'm just going to, again, I want this same structure, but I want to add a couple paths here. So I've got my orders. What I want to do is let's just do one as a test. Let's do set. And maybe we want to know what the total number of orders was. Um, obviously we can just count, um, but maybe we want to return that to our front end. Um, that, you know, isn't going to be doing any kind of number crunching. 
So we could say like, let's call this like number of orders. And here's where we can, again, use that filter um, to get the total number of orders here. So um, we're gonna reference our user. And again, we can use this dot notation um, for orders. So you can kind of see it right behind here that we've got our object of ID, um, name, email, orders. So it's just right here. And you can always copy that and then use the little sub path option there. Um, if, if you've got like a large, like if it's super deep inside of there, um, this can be another way to, to get that. So I don't want to just do this. I want to count the number of items in that array. So I can just do a filter and I'll do count. Okay. So now here we can see this, uh, the set filter. And again, I can click in here. I can see all my settings here. Um, these are things that we can also disable and re-enable or duplicate. Um, so that's pretty handy. So I'll save this and I'll just show you what we get. So we still have that, but now we have this new item inside of our results and that's giving us that same matching, um, total as the number of orders. So that's pretty cool. Well, we can also take this another step further and we can, you know, duplicate this. So now we've got another set. There's also these little, uh, you know, shortcuts here where you can hit set. So now we're going to do a new path. And for this one, we'll do total spent. Okay. And so we're still talking to the orders array, but how do we go through the three items in there? So we want to go through each of these. We're going to loop and, you know, grab those and then, uh, get the sum. So I think actually what we could do is let's see if we can just do this with a regular filter. Um, I don't think we can, I think we're going to need, we would need to do an actual loop or use an expression. Let's just see. Actually, that looks like I did. So I think that's about 3,900. Yeah. So we actually were able to do that um, even easier. Um, the other thing we can do if we wanted to, I'll just show you how we could do these with expressions, just, just for fun. Um, so we can click use expression so now it's converted this to our um, initial variable and then we go to orders and then I can just do a pipe and count. I'll just get rid of this other filter. And then if we want to do this for our order total here, now this one was a little bit easier because it was just a sum, but if we wanted to do something like multiply, you know, the unit price times the quantity. Um, we could do that all in one expression. And so that's where the, the real power comes. So I'm going to click use expression. And so we're looking at inside the orders array. We want to loop through there. And then uh, we're going to do the sum of that. So this just means, again, like it's going to, it's kind of like that dollar sign this. It's the current iteration. So it's going to loop through all of your records um, or all of the items in that array and then do what you have. You can also stack these pipes um, so you can do some cool stuff. And again, you can do math, um, you can do logic. So you could do like, you know, if this, then that. Um, a lot of cool stuff you can do. Definitely recommend checking out the documentation. Okay, cool. So we got the same thing, showed you how to do it a couple different ways. Um, so now I think we are at the point where we want to actually go back and push this into ClickUp. And so one of the things we did, um, we stopped right before, um, you know, doing an update to the task. Now you would think, and I would think as well, um, that we would do this through update task. Well, ClickUp treats custom fields a little bit differently. So they actually have a whole set of um, API calls for their setting custom fields. 
So what we can do here, we want to replace the task ID with um, that, uh, with the actual task ID, obviously, and then the field ID, which we've set over here. Um, so for revenue, let's just grab this. So that'll, I'm just going to duplicate this so we don't mess up the original. So there's our field ID. And then let's go back to uh, ClickUp and grab our little task ID. Again, this is just manual for, for now until we set up the webhook. And here in the body, we just have value. And this is where we're going to set this. So let's set this to one, two, three. And if I run this, uh, we should get um, the main thing here, even though it didn't give us any nice messaging here, we do see that it was a 200 status, and that is a good thing with API calls. So now we see 123. So um, a little bit lower than 10,000. <laughs> but um, now it's the fun part where we actually get to push the real stuff into ClickUp. And so now we'll come back here. Again, use our cool little code um, button here, copy that little curl command. And we're going to do a new um, API call. So external API request is already saved there. Uh, again, you can you can you can search. So if you're just like, oh, I can't remember what it's called, it's something about an API. Um, and then we just do import curl. And you know, I don't know about you, but like, I think that's so much easier than you know trying to you know think about okay, how do I set this up? Like, this just kind of takes like if you're writing code or like I used this when I was you know building stuff in Make or Zapier. It's it's also helpful just because you just it just takes out all the distractions and we're just focused on making that first API call. Um, but the benefit here is now we can just import that right from here. It's got all of our settings. Now what we have to do, you know, right now we're hard coding um, that task ID, which we'll we'll come back to. But here, um, it's already converted that there's that familiar set. So we're setting, we're creating an object, um, you know, just like this is an object. Uh, we're creating that um, just with these filters. So Xano is just kind of creating an, a UI um, for that. But if I click on this value. Now I can come down to this hard-coded integer, and we want to take this. Um, and so inside of our user uh, variable, user object, remember that total spent. So I can just do user dot total spent. And if I didn't remember, I could just you know hit run and debug one more time. Um, and you know, see what this is. I could copy it. You know, again, you can throw this into a, a little notepad and uh, work from there. I'm going to change the 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 resulting variable here as API updated task. Again, call it whatever you like, and then we'll just drag this down here, and we'll see what that response is. Assuming that we did it right. So we should be getting this 3913 inside of ClickUp if we get a 200 response. So that's good. Let's see if it did it. There we go. Um, so that's pretty cool. I mean, we just we got that from our totally separate database, all just by matching that that uh, email address. Maybe you've got you know an ID that you you can actually match these on. You could add a custom field for that. Um, that's just another way that we can kind of keep these things nice and in sync and avoid duplicates and things like that. So, so there's everything working with, you know, being hard coded. And so the next thing that we need to do, um, you know, to get this, this is almost ready for the final step, which is getting that webhook so that whenever we make a change in ClickUp, it automatically flows over into Xano. So. Where we're at here, we've got um, our task ID. Um, so let's see here. So 
So what we need to do is actually replace this back here. Um, let me just show it like this. So we need to replace this with, um, you know, whatever the actual ID is, because what happens when we make that update in ClickUp and it gets sent to this API endpoint, um, it's going to, uh, it's going to send us the, the ID of the task that changed. And honestly, all that we were, we're going to care about is just that ID. So, um, what we'll do here is actually, um, and sometimes I just add like a dollar sign or the curly braces like you see in, in, uh, in Postman. And then what we can do is use this as with a little filter, we can just say replace search for that part, and then we're going to replace it with um, our task ID. Uh, I'm just going to throw something in there for right now, because um, what we actually want is uh, we want to set the task ID up, up uh, above that So um, to make it dynamic. And so let's just actually drag this up here. Um, the, the order does matter. So like if I didn't bring this up above, it'd be like, there's no task. There's no task ID variable. So we'll come back in here. Did that kind of fast. Um, we're just going to click on this part here and we'll replace this with the task ID. Now I need to obviously update task ID. Um, and this is going to be something that we'll, we'll get from the, the, uh, the webhook, but for now, let me just grab this and I'll hard code this for now. So there's our, our task ID. And then if I come down to this other API request for updating the fields, what I want to do is, so here's our task ID. And if I forgot, again, I can come back here and, uh, and then you can see task ID and field ID. Now, if I if I come here, um, I can do the replace like we did, or there's another thing I can do. Um, if you've used uh, some other programming languages, you can do things like this, where um, we're going to use the the sprint f thing here. So we're going to use a filter, do sprint f, and we're going to add two arguments because I did two of those little percent S's. And so in the first one, um, and it just goes from left to right. So this is where we want our task ID. And again, first thing, so the first one is task ID. And then the second one is field ID. Come back here. And then we're going to use the revenue ID. So field ID, there's our custom field ID for revenue. Um, you could hard code it with what that is. Um, I just like to have these variables that I declare at the beginning so that, you know, cause I cannot remember what, what that is for. <laughs> and so, um, and if somebody else looks at your function stack, they will have no idea. So I think it's just a little clean, cleaner to, to have it up there like that. And so, um, I can save that. And so now it should be, be dynamic. And so um, let's see, my stomach is growling, so I hope you can't hear that. Uh, I'm going to grab a different one, and hopefully we have a matching email for this one. We'll find out. I'll paste in this new ID, and so we should be just affecting that one. So hit run, and... We got a 200 response, so there was a little likely a match. Okay, so this used to be 65,000, and now it's 6,000. So, um, so that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so we're almost there. We're in the final stretch. But I just wanted to get everything set up because now all we have to do is just get that that dynamic ID. Okay, so. One of the key parts of this thing that we're building here is that when I go to copy this endpoint URL, I'll just show you what this looks like. Um, so this is what we're going to use 
This is what we're going to tell ClickUp. When you get an updated status or a new comment or something happens, we're going to have you um, send a little webhook response to this URL. And so, um, again, this is where if we were using the paid version of ClickUp, we can say add automation, you know, let's say due date arrives. I've actually used this. This is kind of handy for like, um, you know, maybe you have some like uh, super important task and you want it to send something to Slack or, you know, do something whenever that, that happens. Um, I actually used it. <laughs> Our team took a trip and what I did was I set up um, a variety of tasks with specific due dates and times. And what that did was like, um, during our, our team trip, um, at specific times when those due dates arrived, it would call a webhook. Um, and I would just paste in that URL that I, that I just showed you, I would just paste that into that step. Um, and then, so whenever those, um, those due dates arrived, um, it would trigger my automation, which is pretty cool. Um, a little workaround that we can do here. So we're going to focus on changing the status. Um, but what we could do is we could say, change the status to whatever our, you know, whatever we want it to be. Um, so this is a, a kind of a workaround, um, for that. And again, we can still use webhooks in ClickUp even with the free one, but we just have to know how to use the API. So we'll pop over into Postman. We're almost done. Um, we have this little webhooks uh, folder here. And this is where we need to have that team ID. And uh, one little thing we can do in Postman is if you use the little double braces like this, um, we've already set up that, that variable. And so now we can reference that in here. Um, also, a cool thing, if uh, let's just say you have to do a series of API calls, you can actually over here in the tests area, you can set variables based on the response. So that's getting a little bit into the weeds, but it can be very handy if there are certain things that you have to, you know, test often in, in Postman. So I'm going to duplicate this because, um, let's see here. Okay. So I'm going to duplicate this so we can mess around with it. Um, the nice thing is that they pre filled the body with all of the options. And now we just have to replace the endpoint with our URL here. So again, copy this URL. Um, I'm going to need to hit publish. Um, but I'm going to do something before I, before I run this. So we'll paste this into the endpoint. This is the endpoint that gets called whenever one of these events happens. Now we could leave all of these. I think that's kind of noisy. So really the one that I want to focus on for today is the status is updated, but I've built, um, automations that use like pass comment posted. So, you know, when somebody, uh, posts a comment in a task, um, what I did was actually, um, whenever they have two hashtags in their comment, it will send it to that corresponding Slack channel. Um, as well. So it's kind of cool what you can do with this. So we'll do task status updated like that. Oops. Okay. So this is just an array of these different strings. So you can do as, as few or as many as you like. Um, and this is all that I need to do. So, um, I've got this set. I don't need to bring this into, um, into Xano because this is just something I need to do initially to get that, you know, basically a listener set up. So now we've got our webhook set up. And if I wanted to, um, it's blocking my screen, but, um, if I wanted to get all the webhooks that I've got set up, I can do that as well. So we should see the one that we just created. There's that one. Um, and then this is the other one that I had, uh, been testing. So you can update these. You can say, oh, I changed my, my URL. So I come over here to update webhook, pop in my new URL, or maybe I want to do a different event that I'm listening for instead of st status. Maybe I want just 
you know, the date changed. Um, okay. So our webhook is set. It's now listening. And so, um, what I want to do before I run this as a test, um, let's just hit the plus. And what we're going to do is we just type in webhook. We want to get all input. So, um, you can see up here, we can specify specific inputs. Um, but if we just want to, you know, we don't care, like just give us everything that, that ClickUp sends, because honestly, we don't know what it's going to send yet. We'll save this as webhook. And then let's just do a little stop and debug. Okay. And so this is basically, um, when I hit publish, this is now live. This is ready to go. So as soon as I make a change over here, so let's just say we change it to in review. Okay, that webhook is gonna get triggered now because the status changed. So here's how we see the results. Okay, and that was 12.07 for me. Um, so that is what happened here. So I can go to the input. I can see here's what it, what it sent me. Um, I can copy this. Maybe I'll put this into here just to kind of visualize it. Okay. So I can see it gave me some history items. This is useful as well for like, um, one thing that I did was I set up a, a an automation where, um, when somebody created any, a new task, um, but they didn't assign it to anybody, it would just after, you know, a few seconds, it would look at the history items and see who did it and that it would just assign it to them <laughs> depending on your workflows. Um, there's a lot of options there. So um, the main thing that we want is just this task ID and it's going to be super easy to grab. So it'll just be um, webhook.taskid and grab that. So um, and again, we can use, um, if I copy that there, let's go back into our task ID. And rather than hard coding it, let's do our sub path, paste. There's all of our in information there. But since it's at the root level like this, again, it just helped us build that dot notation. You could totally just type that in um, as well. Okay, so now, moment of truth, I need to remember to disable this little stop and debug. Um, that's something that I frequently forget to do. <laughs> um, and so, I'm going to need to republish it. Cool. So now let's try it with, hopefully this one has a matching record. So it's starting off at 3,500. There we go. Boom. So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, with granted, you know, it took us a little bit to, to set up the first time, but, um, you know, depending on whatever workflow you have, this can be a really nice way to make sure that you are getting, you know, the most recent information. You know, one, another example that I've got is like in our community, we have feature requests and, um, what I've done is set up some automations that come and they, you know, on a daily basis, they, they look at, um, all of the requests. And they pull in the total votes um, and the number of comments into ClickUp. And then I also do things like um, in Slack, it'll give a weekly update on all of the the activity. So like um, what are the top voted things that week? Um, and again, it's just using our, our database here. Um, and there's just so much you can do. So anyway, hopefully this gives you a spark some ideas and gives you an idea of like you can actually, you know, use Xano for more than just uh, building your, your app or your site. You can use it uh, additionally for your own internal operations. So that's all for today. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me on my socials and hope to see you at the next one.